G'day folks, Jordan here. It's been about three weeks since I made a video, so about time that I make something. Well, <laughs> this might not be the most exciting video ever, but it's at least something that will let you all know where I've been and what's been happening since the last video. This has been the biggest annoyance that I've been having to deal with lately, is that I cannot for the life of me get my next video to export properly, and it's very annoying. So I'm about at this point of just giving up and not even bothering uploading it and just just trashing everything because it doesn't seem to matter what the hell I do, I cannot get this to export. I'm not sure if it's got something to do with the footage that was from OBS or if it's just because there's something wrong with the speed of the hard drive and it's not keeping up and it just fails. There could be multiple factors as to why this is not working. I've never had an issue like this where, well, actually, um, I'm trying to think of a time where I had this happen. There was some vlog or some kind of video that I was trying to make and I think there was some corrupted footage. I want to say it was a seaside video, uh, one of my seaside trip videos, and I could not for the life of me get it to export properly because of some footage from an Android phone got corrupted and it was in the timeline and I could not for the life of me figure out what was causing the video to not export properly. So I'm just trying to figure out where this is taking place and trying to isolate the incident and hoping that it will work but I cannot find where it's stopping the export because every time I I like, I start the export, this thing takes so long to export because it's a Core 2 Duo. As everybody knows, these things take God forever to, you know, upload, render anything, there we go, get the right terminology, Jordan, to export anything in 1080p, and it just it takes so long. It takes, like, at least a couple of hours to get, like, I don't know, halfway through this timeline of an hour-long video, maybe even longer than that. It just takes forever. Sorry, my heater just came on. So I'm about at this point of just saying, duck it. I'm not even going to bother with uploading the rest of this video. I'm just going to give up because I can't figure it out, and I ain't got the time for this. I mean, I'll have more time this weekend, but I'm going to be occupied with a bunch of old house-related things, finishing off our move and whatnot, and just generally going to be busy and wanting to relax and take some time off before I start the next section at, uh, at school. So I don't know. Another reason why I was gone for so long was because of the fact that I was actually really busy with school. We have just finished our finals yesterday as of the making of this video. I had two finals to take. I passed both of them and got passing grades, of course. So I'm moving on to the next section. So I wanted to focus on that because it got really, really hectic. And on top of school being real hectic, work got real hectic because... We have a lot of projects going on that have been taking up a lot of my time. So we're trying to finish off a bunch of these network jobs so that way when the um, that way when the campus that I'm on, uh, whenever they open back up for school, uh, you know, they'll actually have working computers with networking and whatnot and having all that stuff configured and ready to roll. So it's been overwhelming. It's just a lot of work in one day and then I come home and then I barely get any kind of rest because, you know, I'm having to cram homework in or I'm having to cram this in and I still have to take a shower at night and, <laughs> well, I don't have to take a shower at night, I just choose to, but, you know, it, it ends up being, like, most of the time at least a 10-hour, 11-hour, sometimes even a 12-hour workday. People don't imagine the kind of crap that I go through any time that I'm working. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, so... You know, it does pay well, and I'm getting compensated for if we travel. It's just one of those things where it's just something that you have to sit down and explain what's been going on so that way people actually know, oh, yeah, you've really been busy. <laughs> some days, you know, some days they're just better than others. So, I don't know. I'm getting through it. I'm managing. It's just, you know, obviously life takes priority before YouTube and obviously in this case because I'm making a video talking about my life on a, <laughs> on a YouTube video it's obviously taking more priority than my coffee and I haven't even bothered to turn on the Keurig so uh, I should probably do that
not sponsored by Spencer's. All right, so now that the coffee montage is out of the way, I guess we can discuss some future video plans. I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with the Compact Preserio 6708. I pulled it out again so that way I could have some fun with it. But mainly, it's still having that really goofy issue with uh, the motherboard, I think it is, where you restart in Windows 95 and then it just locks up and you cannot boot again until you clear the CMOS. It's the goofiest thing I've ever seen a motherboard do. I'm not sure why this thing's doing it. And it certainly didn't do it at first when I got it. It's just really bizarre behavior. So honestly, your guess is as good as mine as to what the deal is with this machine and why it's doing its, it's you know, I guess it's doing its stuff. So anyway, this will probably just get put back on the shelf and I'll come back to it at a later time. There's some other videos that I wanted to work on as well. So let me go to my little cubby. There yeah. This is my leaning tower of computers here at my dorm. <laughs> yeah, because I've been moving, it's been a bit of a hectic mess. So it honestly, everything's just been kind of shoved in here, at least the stuff that I plan on going through or keeping or whatever have you. So there's a couple of things in here that I actually want to pull out to make videos on, some further videos, that is. The first of which is the HP Pavilion 6630, which was in the spotlight in a previous video. Well, now it's going to be in the spotlight once again because I actually found the original recovery media. And this is thanks to someone on my Discord, actually. They had found on archive.org the original set of recovery discs for an HP Pavilion 6630. And I have tried them. They do work. And I was honestly kind of surprised by this. So, in a future video, we will be restoring the original factory installation of Windows 98 second edition on this computer. So stay tuned for that. It is bound to happen eventually. I'll, I don't know when I'm gonna do it, but it is bound to happen. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna turn this into a video or not, but somebody in the comments section on the HP Pavilion 522C video, when I recovered its original Windows installation, was asking if I could make some recovery media or at least a dot ghost file of the hard drive in this case so that way he could recover it and I'm hoping to get to that at some point too I don't think I'm gonna to get to it this weekend at least as of the making of this video so we'll have to see how that pans out but I probably will put it on my list of things to try experimenting with so I won't I probably won't forget it at least not right away or try not to anyway because I do tend to get kind of overwhelmed with projects and I don't usually get things done. That's just a bad habit of mine. So I'm going to see what I can do as far as figuring something out for this computer. At least as far as I can tell, I didn't see any recovery media uh, utilities in the start menu. But I could be wrong. So hopefully, if it is at all possible, I'd like to take advantage of the CD drive here. The CDRW drive. And make some recovery discs if there is a utility. I cannot recall off the top of my head. It's been like three weeks since I've used this computer, so my apologies. And then there's this forgotten thing the eMachine C6537 with the Socket 939 AMD Athlon 64. Now, I don't know what I was gonna do with this particular computer. I might pull it out because I wanna reinstall Windows on it. It never really has gotten the spotlight on my channel unless you're talking about the one live stream that it was featured in. Otherwise, it's basically just kind of sat around here. So, I mean, I might as well put it to some kind of use. I might as well do something with it. I'm not sure what yet, but we'll figure it out. So, if there's anything you might potentially want to see done with this computer, you can either leave it in the Discord or in the comment section down below. And I might finally make a video on this thing. It's never really gotten the spotlight since the video that kind of went semi-viral on my channel, which featured this computer. I've, ever since I've gotten it, I've only really ever made that one video on it. And I've kind of memed about it in my Discord, but I've never really done any kind of video on it or any kind of video with it, other than the time that I installed Windows 10 on it on a separate hard drive. So maybe someday I'll actually make a proper video on this computer when it's uh, running Windows XP or Windows 10 or something like that because this thing is completely and 100% deserving of a video because it's just that big of a meme. This is possibly one of the slowest modern computers I own, and that's no exaggeration. So we'll definitely have to come back to this computer because it deserves its own video, and it's got quite the interesting explanation of why it exists. And maybe, I guess, what we could probably do with the 
Pentium D meme here. And yes, that's exactly what this is. And maybe we'll make a video on this, trying to use a Pentium D in 2019 or 2020. I don't know. And maybe maybe that'll be something I can squeeze in before the end of the year. That'd be kind of funny. And maybe that could be the same thing I could do with the, uh, the A250N here with the Pentium 4. Maybe that could be something I could squeeze in as well. I don't know. And I guess last, but certainly not least, we have this computer here, the PC Chips Socket A system. Now, I just need to make some time to sit down and work with this whole entire project. There's like three different Socket A computers that I've got that I would like to part around with. I got to get the third one for my old house and bring it up here before we finally lock it up and call it quits with that old house. So I got to act quick on it. But basically, this motherboard I'm probably not even going to hang on to. I think what I'm going to do as I was probably going to rock the Gigabyte Dual BIOS Socket A motherboard that I have in another computer at home. And yes, I did say Dual BIOS. That is actually a thing on a Socket A motherboard. It's kind of impressive. But otherwise, the specifications of that machine isn't exactly too impressive. It's an AMD Duron running at 1.3 gigahertz. So honestly, I was almost tempted to just take the Athlon XP 1700 Plus out of this thing, put it into that other motherboard, rebuild it into this case, and then put this motherboard into this case or something of that nature. Just kind of make a re, uh, rebuild montage of some kind. Just don't know how that's going to work out. Definitely have to set aside time if I'm going to do something as big as that because that's going to involve like three computers. Yeah, fun stuff. And then finally, I had one more thing that I was actually contemplating of wanting to put into a video kind of request thing. I almost thought about wanting to do a separate channel. Now, I know that this isn't exactly a big channel as it is, and I understand that. I mean, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is very awesome. I'm very grateful. I appreciate you all for subscribing and watching all this content that kind of comes out whenever it feels like it. But I almost had a thought of maybe doing, like, vlogs on a separate channel, just, like, doing little video talk thingies here and there because they're actually not that hard to make, and I could readily do it on basically whatever I want, I guess, but mainly I'd probably still do it on the MacBook Pro just because, you know, I'd like to make a intro and do the transitions and all that stuff and just, you know, make use of the machine that I paid the money for, for the video editing. I mean, I know it's only like, what was it, like 15 bucks, but still. The only reason why I would say this is because I figure because this channel is mainly focused on tech videos and whatnot, and that's basically what brings in the views. I'd like to separate all of the vloggy bits, all of the like talky bits, all that stuff into a separate channel. And that way, if anybody's interested in watching those kinds of videos, in addition to the tech videos, then they don't have to watch it on the same channel. It doesn't really confuse the kind of content that I make on here. And it just, it's not really for the sake of making another channel for more views. It's just branching my content out to another channel for those people who do want to watch that sort of stuff but they don't have to if they don't want to. It can just strictly be that they can watch this channel for the tech video content if they so desire, and then if they want to see some additional content from me, basically whatever else that I feel like making a video about that isn't necessarily tech related or whatever have you, something that doesn't maybe fit the tech channel at all, you know, then that's another option too. So let me know what you guys think about that. Would that be something you guys would want to watch if you know, that's something that uh, interests you. Do you want to see vlogs from me? Maybe some other kind of content that I might want to make? Because I'm kind of converting my channel that I'm making this video on, and you're obviously watching this video on right now, into some form of a tech-focused channel. I'm trying to, like, diversify a little bit. Though I'm not going to make, like, 6,000 different YouTube channels. That's not my intention. I just want to make, like, one more. So it's not too bad, I suppose. So let me know what you guys think. Again, either in the Discord if you like that idea or if you want to, you know, obviously drop a comment down below in the comment section if you're not in my Discord or, you know, whatever. And that's another thing, actually, before I wrap this video up, there's a YouTuber that was uh, commenting in one of my videos who was mentioning that he had gotten accidentally banned from our server. And I do want to address this because I feel it is important. So I remember when I was making the video about why it took all the Discord things down because of the fact that we were dealing with ban evader problems at the time with at least two users in particular that kept creating alternate accounts to try to evade the ban of that of 
of China English here. They were trying to evade the ban that was put in place for their original accounts because they were acting stupid in my server, and then they decided to act like spoiled entitled brats and keep trying to barge into my server. And I guarantee you, one of them's probably watching this video right now up to this point, and they're realizing they're being called out. So I'm not going to address any names, however, but yeah. So, you know, I begrudgingly put the links back up at least a month ago now, and we're just being cautious about who enters my server. I increased the, like, restriction level a little bit as far as, you know, when you join, you just have to wait 10 minutes before you can enter a text chat or something like that. So I've enforced that rule. I don't know how well it works, but anyway, it doesn't really matter too much. But basically, I'm just trying to tighten down the security to try to make it a more fun environment at the same time while trying not to make it to where you can't enter because we're still trying to fish out whoever the hell is doing their ban evading stuff. And that's happened on occasion. We're still having to ban people that look suspicious. And I apologize in advance if potentially we think your account username might be suspicious. We don't intend to intentionally block people that, you know, aren't these ban evaders. And we're trying to try to keep it, like, safe, I suppose. So... I guess my PSA is if you accidentally get banned from our server because we think you look suspicious but you're not the ban evader, just let me know in some way possible, either be Twitter or my YouTube comments or whatever have you. Just try not to make it on a video that's too unrelated. I prefer that if you do it on the video where the Discord link thing went live. I prefer if you do it there just so that way it doesn't clutter up any of my other videos, but I guess it doesn't really matter at the same time, but... You know, just let me know in some way possible if you did for some reason get banned accidentally because of suspicions that you might be a ban evader, but you're not. Let me know. Of course, I'm not going to do this if you're the ban evader because obvious reasons, but, you know, if it's a legitimate uh, cause of why you might have accidentally gotten banned, let me know, and I will do my best to resolve the situation. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. The Power Mac G5. This is something I've never shown on my channel. I've talked about on the Discord, but I've never really talked about it on a video. This machine needs some work, and I forgot to put the fans back in it because I'm a smart person, but anyway, I digress. This is a Power Mac G5 Quad. Yes, a Quad. One of the lovely PowerPC machines that you can get in your collection of PowerPC Mac computers. Now, this isn't my first G5, as many people know, I had the 99 cent G5 and that epidemic, and that was not necessarily the best thing I'd ever had happen to me, and that ended up being a series of videos. It wasn't, it wasn't really that popular, but I guess the unboxing video kind of sort of went viral on some pages, so <laughs> yeah. But anyway, this is my preserved quad. I got this if, uh, as a like a trade deal from a client as they were wanting to upgrade and they went to a Windows 10 PC from this machine. They were still daily driving it. I was kind of impressed by that. I don't know how you would do it like in 2017, I think is when I got this thing. It's been sitting quite a while because it needs some liquid cooler service, presumably. And I just haven't had the time or the money set aside to, you know, obviously work on this or have somebody else work on it. So it's just kind of sat under my desk for the longest time. And because since I'm moving out... I had to take it somewhere, so I brought it up here to the dorm, so that way I could at least hang on to it, and that way, if I ever get the time to work on it someday while I'm up here or at my future place or whatever have you, then I'll actually get it worked on, and we can get this machine back up and running again, because the case is in very, very good condition. There are some signs of use, like there's some scratches on the aluminum, and it just generally needs a good cleaning, but it's not dented, it's not bent, it's not broken externally in any way this thing is practically as far as all the aluminum joints are concerned between these pieces is basically mint like it's amazing how good of condition the case is on this one and so that's why i've preserved it because it's in such good condition and this one obviously is staying in my personal collection it's not for sale and it's never probably going to be for sale because i think this is probably one of my most fascinating pieces of i guess art in my collection the original cheese grater Mac. And honestly, this thing is in pretty nice shape too. If I open up the side panel here, I'll get you guys a little peek inside. I might as well put the fans back in while I'm doing this, but you can see the little plastic piece is like new. There's not a lot of dust in here, but it could probably serve to have a dusting. 
And I got to put the hard drives back in because I took them out. There is the original video card. This was the basic video card, the GeForce 6600. And uh, I've upgraded the RAM a little bit ever since I got it. I believe I got it when it was equipped with 4 gigs of RAM. And uh, I upgraded it a little bit so that way you know, it would be a little bit more capable. I don't know what I'm ever really going to do with all that much RAM and a PowerPC G5, but hey, you never know. Somebody might want to run Linux, maybe. I don't know. So that's it for this video, guys. I don't have anything else to talk about, so might as well not make this any longer. So I appreciate you all coming to watch. Again, for all the suggested bits that I was asking about in this video, don't hesitate to ask or, I guess, leave your feedback in the Discord or down below in the comment section. You know where it's at. So with that having been said, thank you all for watching once again, if I didn't thank you all before, which I tend to do a lot. And I will see you all hopefully in a future video.